Well, hey fellas, we are at Stone Age Concrete Games. This place is a really unique cross section of manufacturing, high level craftsmanship, and fun and games. And Lem, who started this company, who you will meet shortly, is letting us take a behind the scenes look. If you have any interest in precast concrete and making something like a cornhole set of your own, you are going to learn a ton and you will be well prepared. So pay attention, let's go see how the pros do it. Stone Age uses steel for most of their forms, but they also use melamine, and that's probably gonna be your best bet if you're doing this. Some of their products use a combination of steel and melamine, like this foosball table. This board down here is completely trapped in the concrete, so this gets removed with a skill saw. We just set the blade depth so we don't... I just score it up and then... And then score it up and take it the out. The steel forms are reusable, and even more handy is the fact that they've designed them all so they bolt together, so they can assemble and disassemble really quickly. The ping pong molds that we're using right now, we made in my carport like 12 years ago. So we've made more since then, but the original ones are still in use as well. Normally when you think of precast concrete, you think of things like septic tanks or parking blocks or catch basins, stuff like that. Today we're gonna to be watching cornhole boards, which is a pretty simple shape. It's a board that's two feet wide by four feet long. The front of it rests on the ground. It should be about three to four inches thick. The front of it rests on the ground and the back of it is lifted about a foot off the ground. And then you have a six inch diameter hole, nine inches from the top or the back. You've made cabinets before, right? And woodworking. And so you got, that's, that's doing things right side out to me. This, you have to think about how it comes out of the forms. And so you have to build it backwards and you have to think a lot about how the form is going to come off because you can trap yourself right. pretty easily when you get complicated. All of the edges of the form get filled with a silicone caulk and it's doing two things. Number one, it's giving the cornhole board a nice rounded edge so it's not sharp and dangerous. Number two, it's keeping air from coming into the form which would degrade the finish of the concrete along that whole side. Lem was emphatic that you have to keep the air out of the forms if you want a good finish. Here's an example of what a melamine form looks like, but this is not cornhole. And I am very curious if any of you will be able to guess what it is. If you stay till the end of the video, you'll get to see this game all finished and in action. And you can even watch me and my wife play a game on it. It is really fun, really unique. You probably saw that orange puck, so that's a pretty good clue. Take a look at these seams here. You see that little shine? That's a layer of packaging tape. Helps keep the concrete perfectly smooth. So good pro tip there. After you get your forms ready, it's time to mix concrete. And don't be discouraged if you don't have a big fancy batch plant or a big mixer like these behind me. Lem told me when they were getting started, for years they used a simple drum mixer like this. They did over a million dollars in sales just with one of these. Although they went through a few of them, they mixed so much concrete they would burn a hole and rub right through the, the drum. So you can mix it up any way you want, including a wheelbarrow, which is still a critical tool around here. A concrete mixing setup like this is known as a batch plant, and they can be really big. This one's on the smaller end, but it punches way above its weight. The job of a batch plant is to mix all the different ingredients to make concrete. This silo holds a cement, which is a very finely ground Portland cement. Think of it like a powder and the silo keeps it dry. And then it adds it along with the rock and sand, which you have in these two bins and of course water. And it mixes it all together in the exact quantity you ask for. The machine also adds any other chemicals or fiber you want. For the products they make here, they also add a plasticizer and two different types of fiber, which you'll see in a minute. Quick time out here, guys. I'm editing this video and I realize there's a big concrete batch plant less than a mile from here as the crow flies. Let's put this thing up and go see if we can fly by and take a look at a big batch plant as long as we're on the topic. Well, there's the batch plant down there and I wanted to get right up next to it, but every time I got, well, any closer than this, I started losing signal in my uh, 
remote, so I just brought it on back. You get the idea though. If you're gonna make some cornhole boards and do this at home, Lem said your best bet is to use the 5,000 pound satcrete bags. It's a couple bucks more expensive, but it works great. He used that for a long time and you'll add some fiber to it, but not yet. First, just mix it up normal in a wheelbarrow is fine and push it into your form. And speaking of forms, I didn't mention this hole. This is the one part of a cornhole board that's a little tricky to form because if this plug is a perfect cylinder, it's really hard to get out. So you gotta make a plug that has a slight taper to it so you can tap it back out of there with ease. And there's a lot of ways you could do this. Stone Age uses a piece of wood that they've shaped to have a taper. You could also use styrofoam or maybe a plastic cup or a bucket or something that's the right size, but you're gonna have the best luck getting it out if there's a little bit of a taper. To start with, they're only filling this form halfway up because this concrete has no fiber in it. They don't want the fibers in close proximity to the finished surface, otherwise they could kind of poke and show a little bit. So first put a layer of concrete with no fiber, and then they've got this vibrating table. It's really loud, but the whole table is vibrating, helping it consolidate. After that first layer of concrete is down, they mix up another batch of mud, and this batch has the fiber in it. And if you look really carefully, you can see it. There's two different kinds of fiber. There's a bigger one that's probably two to three inches long and really stiff. And then there's a smaller, lighter angel hair fiber in there as well. And this fiber holds the concrete together and helps keep it from cracking. The concrete that Stone Age mixes up here that we're watching has a couple other chemicals added to it as well. Not so much for strength, but to help it come up to strength faster. They're gonna be able to strip these forms the following day, first thing, which helps them keep their production up. They don't have to sit around waiting you know, for several days, taking up space in their shop. They can uh, have these forms coming off the next day and moving them through the line. The games that Stone Age makes and sells, like these cornhole boards, go to apartment complexes, schools, public parks, and HOAs. Even jails and prisons will order them. They get lots of use from lots of different people, so not only do they need to look great, but they have got to be super duper strong. So after we started with ping pong, I saw ping pong in the parks in uh, Europe years ago. Yeah. And then we wanted to do that. So the second product was chess because oh. people in America are familiar with concrete chess tables. Yep. So we would get requests for that. So we came up with a really beautiful version of a concrete chess table. It's one of our more artistic products as oh. far as I'm concerned. So we did that. And then my friend was like, Lamb, you should do cornhole. And I was like, what's cornhole? <laughs> So, uh, and now it's uh, one, probably by, um, just by pure numbers, it's the most ordered product, right? We still make more off ping pong, but we, we ship out a lot of cornhole boards. Yeah. Unfortunately, I can't be here tomorrow when they strip these forms. They pour and then they strip the next day. In order to do that, they have to heat the concrete up a little bit so they build a little, a little house around it with insulation and put some heaters in there. The warmer concrete is, the faster it cures. At least that's how I think of it. If you're doing this, you might give it a couple days to make sure it gets good and hard before you strip. As a side note, I'm gonna come back next week and film them stripping some different cornhole boards. And Lem said they're gonna be a different color. He didn't give me more details, but I'm looking forward to seeing that.
Well, there you go, guys. It's kind of a red color. It looks pretty cool. And as you can see, the forms simply unbolt, come right off, and then they clean them up and reuse them. If you're doing this with melamine, there's a good chance that your forms are gonna be one-time use only. After the forms are off, they clean up all the corners with an angle grinder. Make sure you're wearing a respirator, of course. You do not want to be breathing this dust. And then they are on to get sealed. Lem started this company after seeing concrete table tennis in Europe and recognizing that he hadn't seen it in the US and there might be people who want it there. This product has been a success already in Germany, a success already in England. It's very common in China. So we had a pretty good guess that it would work. But tell you what, it was a year and a half till the first sale. So we had, you know, there was a lot of gut checking and no money. And it That's was a long time. It was interesting. Yeah. So for a year and a half, you were making tables. We were prototyping. Kind of we were improving our website. We were putting every time we'd put a table somewhere, we'd get pictures and get better pictures on the internet. Well, thanks for watching guys. And if you're gonna tackle one of these on your own, best of luck, shoot us an email. I'd love to see a picture of it. I may attempt it myself later this summer when it warms up a bit. A huge thanks to Lem and everyone here for letting us see their work and go to their Instagram. Lem does a great job of showing all the different products and there's pictures there of the games in their final home, apartment buildings, city parks. There's even some in other countries, mostly North America. You'll get the idea, but it's worth checking out. Lem has had a really interesting career and it's led to this and I wish we had more time to explain it. If you'd like us to come back and get into some of that, he's a really friendly guy and I'm sure he'd let us come. So let me know if there's something you'd like to see more of at their shop here. Thanks again, keep up the good work. We'll catch you guys next time. Well, this game is called box hockey. Lem played it at a summer camp when he was a kid and had great memories of it. So he built this prototype and it really was fun. And if it looks like I'm going too hard on Allie here, I'm telling you guys, she would be annoyed at me if I wasn't giving it my all. So it was a pleasure to play this game for the first time in my life. Thanks for watching. Keep up the good work. We'll catch you next time.